Hello, good evening. Welcome to evening prayer at St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on eight o'clock, six o'clock on Saturday, the twenty second of January, commemorating Vincent of Saragossa. If you're wanting to a fifth day of the week of prayer for Christian unity, if you want to follow the words, you'll find those at the Church of England's website. Also, uh, Aremus Daily Prayer. One may download apps for Apple Android devices. Just uh, find them uh, wherever you get those from. And or following in the book, you will find evening prayer in the morning and evening prayer during the seasons section towards the beginning after the prayer during the day part of that book. If you're following in the book and you want to pick up on the minor adjustments for Vincent, 22nd of January, look that up half to two thirds of the way through amongst the saints' days and festivals. Just an adjustment to the refrain, I think, before and after the Song of Mary or the Magnificat. We're going out on Zoom, Facebook and YouTube, YouTube uh, audio on my Dominic Dobor channel. The code for Zoom is on the Blythe Church's Facebook page and website, and we're streaming on the Facebook page. I'm also live in the building. You're very welcome to join me here in person, 8 and 6 every day. On uh, Sundays, we do traditional communion at 8 in the morning and said even song in the evening with hymns. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The JSB Monsal hymn described here as the following. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Low at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to end his courts in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These though we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give, or evenings of tearfulness, trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The Psalter may be found at the back of the book. If you're following electronically, we simply scroll on. Psalm 61 and 66 are those appointed. I'll read straight through. Do join in by either listening, reading all and or just the refrain, glory be, and even numbered verses. The glory be slips in between the last verse and the refrain on each occasion. And we'll pause that we may contemplate the prayer offered after each, which we may find useful. Psalms 61 and 66. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with a fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. <coughs> For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. <clears throat> may steadfast love and truth watch over him. 
so will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. All the earth shall worship you, O Lord. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name, sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies shall bow before you. All the earth shall worship you, sing to you, sing praise to your name. Come now and behold the works of God, how wonderful he is in his dealings with humankind. He turned the sea into dry land, the river they passed through on foot. There we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever, his eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, O you peoples, make the voice of his praise to be heard, <clears throat> who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you fat burnt sacrifices with the smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had nursed evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shall worship you, O Lord. Scrolling past our first reading from Hosea to the Song of Praise, turning back to the Song of Praise in evening prayer during Epiphany season, if you're following in the book. We'll read it in the same way as we did the psalm. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain. And by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Before we turn to our first Bible reading, this is from Kindle Edition Celebrating the Saints, a reading from a sermon of Augustine in relation to Vincent. With the eyes of faith we have just beheld an amazing sight, the sight of Vincent conquering far and wide. He conquered through the words he spoke and the punishment he received. He conquered in his confession of faith and in the sufferings he endured. He conquered when they burnt his flesh in the fire and threatened him with drowning. Finally he conquered even as he was being tortured and in death itself. Whoever gave such endurance to one of his soldiers, if not the one who first shed his own blood for them. Of such it is said in the Psalms, you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust from my youth. A great struggle procures great glory, not human or worldly glory, but that which is divine and eternal. It is faith which contends, and when faith contends, no one can overcome the flesh. For although our flesh may be torn and mutilated, who can ever perish when we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ? A wealthy person cannot bear to part with his wealth, so how can Christ ever be made to let go of those whom he has brought, bought with his own blood? Vincent's death stands as a tribute not to the glory of man, but to the glory of God. From God comes all endurance. True, true endurance is holy, religious and upright. Christian endurance is a gift of God. There are thieves who bear torture with great endurance, not yielding and overcoming their torturer, but afterwards they will be punished by eternal fire. It is the reason for death which distinguishes the endurance of the martyr from that of the hardened criminal. The punishment may be the same, but the reasons are different. Vincent would have used in his prayers the very words from the Psalms we have just sung, Judge me, O God, defend my cause against an ungodly people. There was no doubt about his cause because he struggled for truth, for justice, for God, for Christ, for faith, for unity, for undivided love. A 
So to our first Bible reading, Hosea, Minor Prophet, towards the end of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you've got a Holy Bible off the shelf, turn to about two-thirds of the way through and flick back. You may need to turn it up in the index, Hosea, H-O-S-E-A. Uh, online, we just scroll back a little from the Canticle we read a moment ago, and we're looking for chapter 2 from verse 2. So chapter 2 is the large number at the head of the paragraph, and the small numbers in the text are the verses. Hosea, chapter 2, from 2. Plead with your mother, plead, for she is not your wife, not my wife, and I am not her husband, that she put away her whoring from her face and her adultery from between her breasts, or I will strip her naked and expose her as in the day she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and turn her into a parched land, and kill her with thirst. <clears throat> Upon her children also I will have no pity, because they are children of whoredom, for their mother has played the whore. She, has con- she who conceived them has acted shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers. <clears throat> they give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore I will hedge her way with thorns, and I will build a wall against her, so that she cannot find her paths. She shall pursue her lovers, but not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but not shall not find them. Then she shall say, I will go and return to my first husband, for it was better with me than now. She did not know that it was I who gave her the grain, the wine, the oil, who lavished upon her silver and gold that they used for Baal. Therefore I will take back my grain in its time and my wine in its season. I will take away my wool and my flax, which were to cover her nakedness. <clears throat> now I will uncover her shame in the sight of her lovers, and no one shall rescue her out of my hand. I put an end to all her mirth, her festivals, her new moons, her sabbaths, and all her appointed festivals. I will lay waste her vines and her fig trees, of which she said, These are my pay, which my lovers have given me. I will make them a forest, and the animals shall devour them. I will punish her for the festival days of the Baals, when she offered incense to them, and decked herself with her ring and jewellery, and went after her lovers, and forgot me, says the Lord. Therefore I will now persuade her, and bring her into the wilderness to speak tenderly to her. From there I will give her her vineyards, and make the valley of Akko a door of hope. There she shall respond as in the days of her youth, as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my Baal. For I will remove the names of the Baals from her mouth, and they shall be mentioned by name no more. A challenging read. And um, <clears throat> it's interesting reading um, Matthew, a gospel, and talking about uh, what heaven is like. And um, hell in the uh, second covenant. And God's punishment tends to be reserved, blessing and uh, cursing tends to be reserved actually for the very end after we've died in the, sort of the, the psyche, the understanding sort of in general in the New Testament. But in the Hebrew scriptures, punishment happens here and now. <clears throat> and um, some of the imagery is really quite challenging and it's possibly no more so than in Hosea where the minor prophet was told to actually go and take a wife who was not going to be faithful and so as we read this I was thinking of um, the Song of Songs which is about proper full wholesome faithful consummated immediacy of physical intimacy and love and the challenge and joy that that brings uh, to the couple um, as a pastoral poem love poem of its type and genre, and also as it reflects how God feels about us as Israel and how God feels about us as church. And this is kind of the opposite. This is Hosea, maybe he's speaking for himself, how cross he is with his wife. <clears throat> maybe he's speaking as God about how cross God is with God's people. In this metaphor, Hosea is God and Hosea's wife is the people of God. And so there's possibly a bit of Hosea in there. There's possibly a bit of God coming through Hosea as he is just so cross. And that's why this business of uncovering shame, as I will strip her naked, just seems so rough. And there's such a vulnerability, this nakedness. Her, she would put away her adultery from between her breasts. Uh, I guess that's a reference to the um, carrying of um, perfumes there and there's the, the reflection that God has Hosea have provided for this woman <clears throat> um, provided for God's people but they thought it was actually their lovers that have given it and this will be revealed 
the Baals are um, is our false gods in the eyes of the writer of this. So um, this wayward people should be married to the true God, but they're not. They're having their way with the Baals. And I don't know whether the Baals were a fertility cult. I'm sure people listening may know better than I. But that may be particularly why this um, approach, this presentation, is being used. However, although the majority of our reading this evening is this negative uncovering and revealing and uh, shame, last paragraph, almost as if there's reconciliation, people in a sort of a very um, vigorous, <laughs> robust relationship may have these sort of squabbles, rows and fall out and get back together again. And this seems to be what's happened here after he spent all his frustration and anger. Suddenly, I will speak tenderly to her. This is God. This is Hosea. There she will respond as in the days of her youth. On the days you will call me my husband and not my Baal. So God is there waiting for us to woo us, to return us. God may be angry, but God will relent and God will be loving and restore. Once our nakedness is uncovered, then to our own eyes, our own self, then we are able perhaps better to respond to the provision of God to cover us and to make us whole. 2 1 Corinthians 9, 1 to 14, our second reading. So if you're following online, we scroll on, scroll on a little. If you are following in a book, Holy Bible, the Corinthians letters <clears throat> are about in the middle of the last third. Uh, the second covenant or Greek scriptures do use an index if it doesn't fall open. First Corinthians is what we're looking for. I think there are one, two and three Corinthians. Then again, the large number at the head of the paragraph is the chapter number nine. A small numbers in the text, one to 14. 1 Corinthians 9, 1 to 14. Am I not free? Am I not apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defence to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to our food and drink? Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living, or who at any time pays the expenses for doing military sorry, who at any time pays the expenses for doing military service, who plants a vineyard and does not eat any of its fruit, who tends a flock and does not get any of its milk? Do I say this on human authority? Does not the law also say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it for oxen that God is concerned, or does he not speak entirely for our sake? It was indeed written for our sake, for whoever ploughs should plough in hope, and whoever threshes should thresh in hope of a share in the crop. If we have sown spiritual good among you, <clears throat> is it too much if you reap our material benefits? If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we still more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who are employed in temple service get their food from the temple, and those who serve at the altar share in what is sacrificed on the altar? In the same way, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. <coughs> <coughs> Basically, Paul is arguing here that they should be giving him some uh, a stipend, and some upkeep. Uh, he is feeding them, so they should feed him. He's feeding them spiritually, they should be feeding him physically. And uh, he's saying that he's not actually claiming this. He's just putting it before them to, as, it were, something to think about. Um, interesting also, this, he talks elsewhere about being quite proud of the fact that he's not married, as almost as if he doesn't really have any um, urges or appetites in that direction. But here there's just, it seems to me as I was reading it, just a slight grief, bereavement, revelation of weakness and vulnerability. Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife? So obviously, he's uh, maybe he's envious, maybe he's jealous, I don't know, but he's just slightly rankles that other people who are married, other people are being paid by these people, but they're not paying him. Maybe they think he's above and beyond their support as an apostle, and he passes by. But uh, he uses a Gentile analogy. Um, who at any time pays expenses for doing military service. Then he uses a, a Jewish-Hebrew uh, argument, it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox. And then he concludes, having said you should be paying the people who teach you, that uh, we're not asking for this because we don't want to stand in the way of your growth in Christ. 
May we be inspired and enabled to support and sustain as church our ministers. Uh, may the Church of England more generally recognise that ministers need to be sustained and paid. And uh, may that trickle down and through. May we as congregations recognise and know that. It seems that we're, um, there's an encouragement in the Church of England to move towards unpaid staff. <coughs> may God give us wisdom. Moving on to the responsory back in evening prayer during Epiphany season. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. <clears throat> the Song of Mary. Uh, I'm not sure whether this refrain is the standard that you've got in the book or whether you need to check the book um, to find um, the refrain as begins, Behold, Behold my servant. It doesn't look like common of martyrs, but uh, we should all be on the same hymn sheet, as it were, when we get to verse 1, My soul proclaims. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, the anointed one, on whom my spirit rests. Source of the Sabbath, heir of peace, seal, advocate. One in three, three in one. We come to you at the end of this day of rest, and we thank you for those moments where we have rested, where we have perhaps been able to do things which we have otherwise not been able to, um, as uh, during the working week, if we're a nine to five, Monday to Friday person. We thank you for the opportunity we might have had today to do things like gardening, to cook, to... Uh, paint, to listen or play music, whatever it is that we've done, to exercise, to cycle, swim, walk, to spend time with family and friends that we're normally separated from as we do our work. And uh, we might have done other activities, been in touch with other people, and uh, we might have enjoyed the weather and anything that is conducive to peace and well-being. We thank you for all these moments of rest. We also recognise during the day that there might have been moments and occasions where we have been anxious, frustrated, have, we have strived or striven to achieve ends which were beyond us. We may have panicked, packed too much in. We may not have been still. People might have been unkind to us. We may not have had peace. <clears throat> we may have hurt. And so we come to you at the end of the day for healing, protection and provision and answers from Release International, we pray that Christians in Vietnam will be like Abraham, who did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Um, turning as we speak to the Christian Aid website, and uh, scrolling through to today's daily entry, we pray for the Lent Walking Humbly journey to be a meaningful and helpful resource that lots of people will engage with <clears throat> and find useful. Do look it up if that sounds uh, like a plan for you or your church. The Suffolk Diocese uh, Prayer Diary has us pray for Pakenham with Norton, Tostock with Great Ashfield, Hunston and Roland Toft parishes and their clergy, Catherine J. And uh, their permission to officiate, <coughs> excuse me, self-supporting any curates, readers, elders that they have there, and their lay leadership in terms of church wardens, treasurers and secretaries, also for the other people on the PCC's electoral role, congregations and communities. We pray that your light will shine in and through, over and around 
them as they engage with your mission and ministry in that place. We thank God for our libraries, museums and parks as they promote well-being, knowledge uh, or wonder. And we pray that uh, those who are trustees, managers, staff at all levels um, will be sustained, have wisdom to make the best of those uh, public resources. And we pray that we as the public will value them sufficient that we will um, seek to pay our way and uh, through taxation and through uh, uh, rates enable them to be maintained in good order and praying for our link parish we pray for Livingston who is in Kigali parish in Kagera diocese or Kigali we pray your blessings of health wealth and prosperity over him and his people <coughs> We pray for our um, own patch. Usually we pray for places, but on Saturdays we pray for our ministers. Uh, the lay leadership in the afternoon, Geoffrey, Pedro, Carolyn, Karen, Jason and Philip as uh, lay chair, treasurer, administrator, choir director, organist and uh, tower captain or tower spokesman, <coughs> spokesman of the towers uh, across our group. We thank you for them and uh, for their commitment over and above their other duties at PCC members, church wardens for their own villages, uh, families, businesses and at home. And uh, we recognise their inability to do what needs to be done without their support, assistance and help. And so we are truly grateful and we pray that they will know that, be encouraged and inspired as they see their gifts being used and valued. And uh, may they know their place in your rule and your structures, your organisation and be blessed because of the contributions that they make. And moving on to Corona, we pray for those in emergency medical services. <clears throat> and we pray that they will have enough kit to keep themselves safe and do a professional job and enough colleagues to take time out to be fulfilled in other aspects of their lives. We pray they'll be satisfied and encouraged in their interventions. And we pray for the future where we have learned more about ourselves, about creativity, the environment, our relationships, use of internet, uh, information technology, um, sharing, cooking, all those things that in lockdowns were all we were able to do. May we continue to live with that uh, increased knowledge, understanding and experience, and may that change and shape the way we live in community in the months and years ahead. And so we pray for those whom life is difficult at the moment. We pray for Peter, Betty, Beryl, Barbara, Jean, Olive, Doreen, Margaret, Claire, Lillianne, Dennis and Kay, Sarah, Ron, Liz, Emily, Anthony, Maggie, Valerie, Di, David, Paddy, Mike and Malcolm. <clears throat> we ask that you'll break through with your sovereign grace and make provision, be it financial, relationship, work, healing. <clears throat> if uh, some administration needs to be moved along, we pray that you will um, move by your spirit to cause that. And we ask that over and above all that uh, practicality, we pray that these people will know your presence and that that knowledge, that experience, will buoy them up, shore them up, encourage them, and that they will speak of joy and hope, even in their decline, or even in their whatever their circumstance may be. Yet we pray for a turning round uh, and a restoration by your grace, uh, but we don't hold that out as um, to mock or as a challenge where it is not to be, may we be straightforward in our prayers and our understanding and supportive if uh, death and a confused death, maybe even a painful death, an isolated death is actually what some of these are going to face. We thank you that you will go with them as their rod and staff as they make that journey. May your cross and its shadow be a comfort and a guide And we thank you for the lives of Terry, Lorraine, Halewen, Teresa, Len, Ron, Jean, Des, Arnold and others who have recently died. We pray for those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident and those that have taken their own lives. We remember those we've known and loved and see no longer and all do so to be faithfully here. We remember Vincent too uh, on the anniversary of his death and uh, give thanks for his determination, his faith, his care, speaking for his bishop who had a stammer and uh, preaching nevertheless, even though the end was nigh. And we thank you for his example. 
and uh, the encouragement he has been to others who face persecution in the centuries since. May he pray for us that we will be prepared to speak truth to power. And uh, may he pray for us that we will be spared the hurt and the pain that he endured as he testified and made the good confession. We also pray for ourselves and all who mourn that we will hear your voice over the chaos, your inspired word spoken by the breath of your incarnate mouth, and that that will bring peace, order, fruitfulness, light in our grief and our loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And just some of you, let us in your heart, nor come to despair. Bring hand and listen to your heart, and hold us and serve me. Pass up your heart, and I'll dash. And quite you had an other dad, then she married me for us on your come out. But in your mouth, come just for them, had you lost the chemi, you must an iram. But in a sun, she met dead, then she took a leash for some iram, as an ishima as a mahanana, then a maniac for a fissim a boy who stood us. Fray we shimmer sing your lecomish maya at this mahan near Kanama Aliat as Pafosush and Adikavet. We pray you could lost Nanif as Mayan Saturday, she was a motor rush to catch it was Mahanakar. The Hanesh we see my remedios no rapash basakadish basima of Yasta, and pray we send you like a basim as Balayas no from Nulok and as Bahaya and Mishima as Badurasta. And pray you got my dim yellow fishman, Nunor of Hoshimak for Abaha and Abuyos than I see you, Mr. And behind you, Miss Nari and Nasani, you shall have fish at Missia and Akan. Nemo also, Yash Visima Kalieta, which my horse have, bring me she see my dolors near Kazamaja for the other Kazamachas, and I shall see Mosu Romaya Kazam as a Malasha. Tell it can he ascend it, Mosodon Stone, yes, no Hazakadesh. The prayer for Epiphany season from the book Almighty God in Christ, you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.